Hello and welcome to this video about the behavior of gases. We just talked about fluids, now we're going to look at gases. How do gases respond to changes in temperature and pressure? We're going to look at two laws. Boyle's law, which has to do with volume and pressure. And then we'll look at Charles' law, which has to do with temperature and volume. Let's look at Boyle's law. Um, in order to think about Boyle's law, let's first talk about volume and pressure and how they are related when we're talking about a gas. This is a picture of um, a scientist on Antarctica who has built a weather balloon with a low density gas near the surface of the Earth. When this balloon is released, it has weather instruments inside of it, and as that balloon rises, the pressure gradually gets less and less that is being pushed on the outside of this balloon. There's less and less pressure, which causes this balloon, since it has less pressure pushing on it, to expand. The uh, balloon actually expands until it gets so large that it ruptures, and all of the weather instruments uh, fall back down to the ground. So from this example, we know what happens to volume when you decrease pressure. When the pressure on the outside of the balloon is decreased, the volume of that balloon increases. What happens um, if we decrease the size of the container in which the gas is held? What might happen to the pressure? Let's think about that question um, with this example. Let's say that we um, decrease the volume inside this little piston here. And what is going to happen and why? Uh, why would we get high pressure if we're decreasing the volume? Remember that the kinetic theory of matter and the pressure from a gas depends on how often all those little particles are striking the walls of the container. If you squeeze this gas into a smaller space, its particles are going to strike the walls and each other more often, causing increased pressure. The opposite would also be true. If you give these particles more space, more volume, they're going to hit the walls less often, and the pressure from that gas will be reduced. So Robert Boyle in the 1600s, uh, he was a British scientist, he described this particular property of gases. According to Boyle's law, if you hold the temperature constant and you decrease the volume, here we're decreasing the volume of the container of gas, the pressure from that gas is going to increase. As the volume decreases, the pressure increases. That's Boyle's law. So Boyle's Law can be written as a mathematical relationship. If we hold the temperature constant, pressure times volume of a gas does not change. The pressure times the volume initially is going to be equal to the pressure times the volume final. As far as units, uh, it really doesn't matter what units you use as long as they are the same. Your units for pressure, initial and final, they have to be uh, the same units, and the units for volume, initial and final, need to be the same units as well. Let's try a sample problem together. Let's say we have a weather balloon with a volume of 100.0 liters when it's released from sea level. Well, and at sea level, our pressure is going to be 101 kilopascal. So what will the balloon's volume be when it reaches an altitude where the pressure is 43.0 kilopascal. I'm going to write down my unknown, my final the balloon's final volume, Vf, is my unknown. My initial pressure is the 101 kilopascal. That's when I'm at, at sea level, when I'm releasing the balloon. And my initial volume is 100 liters when I'm releasing the balloon. Uh, my final pressure is 43.0 kilopascal. I'm going to use the equation for Boyle's Law. Um, the initial pressure times initial velocity equals final pressure times final velocity. And as long as my units are consistent, I'll be fine here. Plugging all those values in um, to my equation, my uh, pressure initial, 101 kilopascal. My pressure final is um, 43 kilopascal, so I keep those in the same units. 
Um, I'm using liters here, so my final answer should be in liters. Now, I would like my VF, final velocity, to be alone on this side of the equation, so I'm going to divide both sides of the equation by 43.0 kilopascal, and you can see that these values will cancel out. I'll end up with only my final velocity on this side, and I can just say 101 times 100 divided by 43. The kilopascals cancel out, and I'm left with only liters for units. And we can do a quick estimate. Does 235 liters make sense? Yeah, the pressure was slightly more than halved, so the volume should slightly more than double, and that's about what happened. It went from um, 100 liters to slightly more than double, 235 liters. Now let's take a look at Charles' law. It has to do with temperature and volume. Um, Jacques Charles in the late 1700s was a French scientist who noted this, so the law is named after him. Um, he noticed that when you increase the temperature of a gas, the volume increases. Um, you can see that here with these pistons. Uh, you can see, uh, you can explain that too uh, using the kinetic theory of matter as uh, here these are cooler, negative 65 degrees Celsius, here's 250 degrees Celsius. Um, but as these gas particles are heated up, they're going to start moving faster and faster. And as they move faster, they strike the walls of their container more often and with more force. And therefore, uh, they push this piston up and end up occupying more volume. Uh, you know that too in the case of a balloon. A balloon will expand as it's heated. Here's just some data from an experiment that illustrates uh, Charles' law. We are graphing volume versus temperature. And there are three different lines indicating three different pressures that are being held constant throughout the, each of the experiments. So uh, for, for the pressure of 0.5 atmospheres here, you can see that increasing the temperature increases the volume. You can see that at this pressure, increasing the temperature linearly increases the volume. And again, at this pressure, uh, the same thing happens. At what pressure is a temperature increase giving us the greatest increase in volume? Interestingly, here's 0.5 atmosphere, 1 atmosphere, and 2 atmosphere. The lowest pressure uh, actually gives us the greatest increase in volume for the uh, temperature increase. Now, just like Boyle's Law, Charles' Law can be written as a mathematical equa equation as well. Now, this equation works when the pressure on the gas is held constant. When the pressure on the gas is held constant, this ratio of volume to temperature initially will be equal to the volume divided by the temperature final, the final volume divided by the final temperature. Now, it's also important to note that in this case, the temperature is the absolute temperature. It's measured in Kelvin. And if you've forgotten how to calculate Kelvin, it is simply degrees Celsius plus 273. Let's do this example problem together. Let's say we have a 2.0 liter balloon at room temperature, which is about 20 degrees C. It's placed in a refrigerator, which is at 3 degrees C. It's 3 degrees, 3 Celsius degrees above freezing. What's the volume of the balloon after it cools in the refrigerator? So our unknown is the final volume. What is the volume after it cools in the refrigerator? So VF is our unknown. We know the initial volume is 2 liters. The initial temperature is 20 degrees C. We need to convert that to Kelvin. That gives us 293 Kelvin. We know our final temperature is 3.0 degrees C. We need to convert that to Kelvin. That's 276 Kelvin. Now we can write down our Charles' Law equation and solve then for our final volume. Now I just plug values into my variables for the equation. I have my initial volume is 2 liters, my initial temperature is 293, my final volume is what I'm solving for, it's my variable, my unknown, 
my final temperature here is 276 Kelvin. So now, if I, I want to get uh, my final volume alone on the right side of the equation or on one side, whatever side that is, so I can get rid of this by multiplying both sides by 276 Kelvin. When I do that, you can see that 276 Kelvin on this side cancels out, and I am left with only my final volume. So I can say 276 times 2 divided by 293 is going to give me my final volume, and you can see that the Kelvins cancel out. I will only have units of liters left, so my final volume will be in liters. And we get a final volume of 1.9 liters. Does that make sense? Well, yeah, when we put a balloon in the refrigerator and it cools down, we would expect it to shrink, and it does shrink, but not by very much, 1.9 liters versus 2.0 liters. Here's some advanced ideas. What's the gas law that combines both Boyle's and Charles' law together, and what do the variables in that equation represent? Or why are tennis balls packaged in pressurized cans? Or how would the number of molecules affect the pressure of a gas, or the volume of a gas, or the temperature of a gas? Or other questions you might have. I look forward to seeing what you come up with, and we'll see you in class.